what we're going to be going over here are contingent liabilities or loss contingencies for losses that might arise in the future here and where the company is self-insured or they don't have any insurance to cover any of these losses here. And we'll go through this example here where Corporation A operates three chemical plants and they're self-insured with the special risk of injury here to employees and losses due to fire and explosion in these plants. And during 20X1 they had no major losses due to injury or casualty here and on average they have three accidents per year ranging in cost from eighty thousand to five hundred thousand dollars each so the question is here what amount if any should be reported on our financial statements as a liability or contingent liability here as of 12 31 20 x1 so let's go down and look at our timeline here so what we have to do here is we're going to be uh, issuing our financial statements here for 20 x1 and that would be the end of the year here 12 31 20 x1 and uh, question is what uh, to report here as a contingent liability here. Now, we're not going to actually issue these financial statements here for the year 20X1 until 215 20X2 here. And um, this is when the financial statements are issued. But management gets together here after the first of the year here on uh, January 15th, 20X2, and they determine it's very probable they're going to have future losses here based on their past experience here. And the damages are going to range from $200,000 to a million dollars here in probable losses here due to these uh, fires or explo explosions here and what causing uh, personal harm and injury to property and people and property here. So there's a very probable chance that they're going to have in damages here for 20X2. And should they be reported here as a contingent liability here on the balance sheet here of 20X1. Okay, so let's go down and look. Yeah, and, and then one other point here. Um, actually, there had been an accident and it, it happened. The accident happens and there's a loss incurred here, just say uh, April 1st here at 20X2. So actually, there was an accident here. So an accident actually happened here. So let's go down and look at our financial statement reporting here for 1231 20X1. So this is the year 20X1. Remember, we didn't have any major accidents in 20X1, and there would be no contingent liabilities for these major accidents. But uh, we're looking into the future here for any probable uh, future uh, damage here or contingent liabilities that we're going to be looking at here in the following year and should they be reported here uh, as a contingent liability here for the uh, financial statements here at 20x1 so this is the answer here so corporation a does not have insurance and will have to pay any future damages due to these accidents here any future accident costs do not meet in this case here for this example here do not meet the definition here of a liability because they do not arise from past transactions here but relate to future events as of the financial statement date here so no assets have been impaired or liabilities incurred nor is an amount reasonably estimated here so point one here uh, for this again example here again where we're looking at these future damages here that we probably going to happen but they didn't actually happen now this is a this situation does not satisfy the criteria for recognition here of a loss contingency here and point two unless a casualty has incurred or there is some other evidence to indicate impairment of asset prior to issuing the financial statements there is no disclosure required relative to this loss contingency. So going back up to our timeline here. So we didn't actually have any losses here in 20X1. We're only looking at the future here. And since we're looking at the future here in your 20X2, uh, and they didn't, there wasn't any occurrence or any loss uh, prior to this financial statement date here. Therefore, we're not going, we wouldn't be recording any contingent liability, nor would we be reporting or um, actually disclosing it in our financial statement because this is all based on some future loss that is probably probable but it hasn't yet occurred here based on our financial statement date here at the end of the year here 12 31 20 x1 okay so let's go over here and, and look at what we're talking about again here. So again, for contingent liabilities, reporting and recording, in this case, we're going to be looking at the self-insurance here. And the lack of insurance does not of itself result in the impairment here of assets, nor the incurrence, incurrence here of a, a liability here. It 
expected future injuries or other damage to the property of others here. Even if the amount is reasonably estimated, it does not require recording a loss or a liability. To uh, record and report a loss contingency here, the following is required here. Point one here. The cause of the loss or litigation or the claim must have occurred on or prior to the financial statement date and the amount of the loss must be reasonably estimated in order for a loss contingency here to be recorded. And point two here. This uh, disclosure is required when the criteria for a loss contingency are not satisfied and there is a reasonable, po a reasonable possibility that a liability may have been incurred. No, it may have been incurred. It's not a future event here, but it may have been incurred here prior to or on the financial statement date here. Or an asset is impaired or it's probable that a claim will be asserted if there is a reasonable possibility of an unfavorable outcome here. So these are the criteria here. So we're talking about something that would have happened here in the past or prior to the financial statement dates, not something in the future here. So uh, there would have had to have been a reasonable possibility that a liability had incurred. So it really, something had to have happened here prior to the financial statement date here in our example. And we'd also have to have um, know if that there would have been an unfavorable outcome here before we'd be doing any reporting here for any contingent liability here based on our example here. So, and then to summarize here, loss contingencies here, um, a here. Two conditions must exist before a loss contingency is recorded. Uh, point one here. Information available prior to the issuance of the financial statement indicates it's probable that a liability has been incurred at the date or on or before the date here of the financial statements. And point two. The amount of the loss can be reasonably estimated here. And also point uh, B here. If the amount of the loss is uncertain, the following disclosure in the notes is required here. Point one, the nature of the contingency here. And two, an estimate of the possible loss or range of loss or a statement that estimate cannot be made here. So we just went through this example. Let's go back to this timeline again here. So we had to come up with what would we record anything on here financial statements here at 1231 20x1 here for any the, we didn't have any losses here for the year here 20x1 say January our reporting period here January through December here at 20x1 but we got together Based on past experience here, it's probable that a future loss or damage is going to happen here in 20x2 here. And should it be recorded here in the financial statements here at 20x1 here, or re at least um, disclosed here? Well, based on the fact that it's a future loss here, it didn't happen in the past, no, you wouldn't have any disclosure and obviously you wouldn't have any recording here. So even though and you notice here, since we determined that here before our, uh, we actually issue our financial statement. So that's the deal here. If it's something that happens in the future and not in the past, then you wouldn't be disclosing it or recording it here on your financial statements.